I must grow in Christ, my Lord, my Lord, I'm a head of salvation, salvation, I will walk the path of faith as I give my life to Him. I must grow in Christ, my Lord. I must preach, I must preach, Jesus, my Lord. Yes, my Lord, I'm a, yes, I'm a heir of salvation. Hallelujah, bring it. Reconciliation between lost souls and the Lord. I must preach, I must preach Jesus, my Lord. My Lord, I must worship, I must worship Christ, my Lord. My Lord, I'm a Salvation bring refine him by life, bring in honor to his name. I must worship Christ, my Lord. I must die, I must die in Christ, my Lord. Yes, my Lord, I'm a head of salvation. Salvation, living all my life for Him. And when my earthly days are over, I must die in Christ, my Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, we give you thanks again for all that you have begun to do with us and how it has pleased you to again carry us since we began this meeting. Thank you for all the things you have already started showing us this morning. And as we press ahead, let grace be released unto us to understand as you open your word by your spirit to us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Um, it is becoming very clear that there's a time of preparation as God is speaking very clearly to us, it's also becoming very clear that there are choices we must make. You will need to personally take a decision on how you want to go. We're praying that you will not be careless in the decisions you made. There are several images and we have discovered that the world system has its own image that uh, it keeps showing. And they are, not, they are not careless about it. They are very deliberate about it. The entertainment industry is ruled by the Freemasons Illuminati. You cannot, you can't, you can't crash in into the popularity and fame status that uh, most people desire if you don't belong they make it difficult for you see the world system is very organized it might even interest you to know that politics in nigeria in some states you have to belong to a particular cult to ever have anything to do in that state is that as commissioner or anything 
and usually you will have to fly the flag that the state governor himself is flying they they don't you don't know these things sometimes you wonder why some people are picked you see very very uh, qualified individuals and they are jettisoned uh, because you don't belong because you don't belong the musicians you admire sometimes you wonder why one song you wonder what is in this song but it's going everywhere because there's an occultic power backing it the devil projects it and you are just quietly desiring i wish i can i can be as popular as this person he said well it doesn't just happen like that they work very hard he said yes i'm ready to work hard i'm ready to work hard if it is to train uh, he said yes you can train but it's more than that uh, it's more than that if you keep showing interest one day they say, okay let me show you what it takes let me show you what it takes uh, there was, I, I may not be able to tell the story very well, but somebody uh, narrated the story. So I was, since I wasn't there, I may not be able to say it accurately. So if you have heard the story and it's not accurate, it's just how I heard it and what I can recall. Each time I tell stories like that, that when I'm not there, the one I heard, I like to say that I wasn't there. Oh. Uh, so <laughs> because I was not there, uh -huh. But the story is told of this young man, a pastor, faithful, laboring, teaching the word correctly. His congregation was not growing. It was still very small for years, for many years. And before his eyes, one so-called man of God just came, opened a church on the same street. And before you knew it, they were in thousands. It's wonderful. When he stands up like this, things are happening. People are falling, like our brother said. He doesn't like to use that word, but that's the word you understand. He said they are slain in the spirit. Whatever is killing them, I don't know. The Holy Spirit doesn't kill like that. <laughs> Unless he's dealing with sin in your life. You know, and everybody, and this man, out of a genuine heart, decided to go and see this younger pastor. To say, brother, I thank God for you. You know, I've been here many, many years before you came. I've been struggling. Maybe there's something you need to teach me. Is there a way of expounding God's word that I don't know? I'm yet to catch. Is there a way of doing things? And uh, the man said, you really want to, you really want to, eh? He said, Yes. Uh, if it is uh, 40 days fasting, I can join you. He didn't know the person was. So he thought he was talking to Brojato. Who is talking about 40 days fast? He said, well, if you're serious, uh, I will, when you're serious, you come. Brother said, I can. I've been crying. I've been crying. Maybe I don't know how to fast. I've been fasting the much. He said, is there a way? He says, all right. I will show you. And he said, we are going to travel. <laughs> he took him to Lagos. Something happened. Something happened. And eventually they were put, you know, thank you, sir. The, the church of the so-called man of God, he took him to. They were going to be having vigil that night. He said, that's where we begin. And something will happen. According to the story, eventually took him to Babbage in the middle of the night. And I said, just what? They did some things. And a woman appeared from the waters. He said, when she comes, sleep with her. It was terrible. And the man did. And finished. And say, look, let's go back now to the all night. You will see something. Ah, when the man stood up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Things were happening. He was shocked. He said, that's it. You see, but there's a price to pay. The thing is that every month, you must seek to disvirgin a girl. You must sleep with a girl who is a virgin. 
You think that the devil just gives things. Only God gives good gifts and does not add sorrows to it. Everything the devil gives you, he's waiting to collect more than that from your hand. You see them, they just do like this and things are happening. But there's a covenant to destroy innocent lives on a monthly basis. And the man, how did the story come out? He did that for some months. But you see, truth has been deposited inside his heart. He began to cry, say, I can't live this kind of life. That's not what I learned. It's better for me that my congregation remains small. If there are 25 and I carry them to heaven, it's better for me. Than this kind of life I'm living now. And they say things are happening. That's how he called people and cried out. And said they may kill me. But I can't keep this. This is not the life I learned. And he cried out. So sometimes you see these people. When they take the microphone and they sing a song. And you are wondering, excuse me. Some of the songs I've written, they are better than this. What's even in this thing? You don't understand. There's something. There's something. Some people have alluded to the fact that Michael Jackson was killed. He became bold and began to speak against the Illuminati. <laughs> he began to speak. <laughs> they say, you, you, we made you, we can finish you. They quenched him. It's very simple. They quenched him. When you hear the word of God saying, you know, some of the people who wrote songs before us, I hope you know it was in the Psalms. I don't know what they saw. And the man concluded, I, I will need to check that Psalm, whether it was David. But either David or one of the few other brothers that contributed in the writing of the Psalm. I don't know whether the sons of Asaph or it was Haman or Jeduthun. He said, I will rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness, of ungodliness. Let me ask you, is it not better to remain small in Baba's compound than to blow big outside the compound? I think it's better for me. It's better for me. I will remain here. I will remain here. They have abused me. It didn't change anything. Some have come in terms of encouragement. Let's encourage you. It didn't change anything. Some have come and say, see, the way you're doing, that's not. Let's show you. That's the way they do it now. And people just go anywhere. I say, but I can't do it the way they are doing it. Because when God sh shows, when he gives a work, normally, he will give a pattern for it. You see, he kept saying to Moses, make sure you build this thing according to the pattern that I showed you. Where, please? On the mount. So whatever it is that Bezaliel and Aholiab are designing, they will normally subject you and say, Oga Moses, come and check. He said, no, 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 no. The protrusion here, it's not, it's, I didn't see the protrusion here when I was seeing the act there. He said, but for proper, not just for balance, but for aesthetics. For the beauty of the design, we need to vary it like this. Moses said, don't put me into trouble. I didn't see it on the mount. Remove it. God is so specific. So specific. And I wish you would permit him to be specific with you. Even the things I used to, used to trouble me. I said, Lord, even what you, are, you permit... On, in, you know, in the life of others, you just cage me like this. I can't go anywhere. I can't go anywhere. One day God said to me, <laughs> the man going somewhere must avoid those going nowhere. The people you are watching, I'm not going anywhere with them. They are not planning to go anywhere with me. I'm going somewhere with you. Stop looking at those going nowhere. If you're traveling and you were you you got to the park and you needed to catch up with something in Port Harcourt, and you were in Aba, 
You need to catch up with a meeting. And somebody just come and say, in the park, and say, look at him. Big head. He said, why are you calling big head? What did I do to you that you're calling me big head? He said, yes, if I call you big head, what will you do? In fact, your father is big head. Your mother big head. All people in your family big head. Uh -uh. And you settle down. The vehicle was almost getting filled. And you jumped down and said, you will tell me today why you are abusing my father. When I didn't, I, uh, what did I do to you? That you say big head. And you cause commotion. And you jack him. And he jacks you. You jack him. And then, you know, all kinds of things. And maybe people gather. They say union needs to settle this matter. Uh, come to the union. And all of that. And they just finish. This man is just an agboro that is there. Every day he's in the park. When they finish judging the case. And they say, actually, sorry. This man, that's just the way he normally will, will be, be troubling people. Eh? We know him. He's always here. Every time that's what he's doing. We apologize. We don't see any fault in you. Please, continue your journey. Can I ask you, if he has wasted three hours, who is at the losing end? Is it the tout that is going nowhere or the man who has lost what he was supposed to be coming to Port Harcourt to catch? Eh? Ah, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Some of the people you are admiring, they are not planning to become anything serious in God's hands. Some of the people you want to follow their footsteps, they will end here. Nothing lasting. When God wants to go far with a man, he digs his foundation deep. You know God was dealing with foundation this morning. Eh? Hello, are you with me? He digs his foundation very deeply. What he can overlook in other people's lives, he can't overlook it in your life. It's, you know, Kai, the foundation is very deep. You know, when God begins, when he's digging foundation, sometimes you don't wonder. Some years ago, many years ago, God was still, that's the kind of confusion I was having. He was still digging deep in my foundation. I was going to uh, invigilate an exam in the university. Since I teach in the university, I wasn't a doctor then, not to even talk about being a professor. And, you know, uh, there was this man, one doctor, somebody who was, I won't mention him, who was an exam officer then. In those days, the practice is that if you're going to uh, examine, you set your questions and you submit it to the exam officer. He keeps custody of it so that there's no leakage. And what will happen is that on the day of exam, he would have come very early, produce the, the questions, or he would have produced the ones for tomorrow, today, and packaged them, sealed. Usually when you come to the exam hall, you will raise the packet of envelope. You say, this is your question papers. It's still sealed. So, he normally, exam officers will normally come very early in the morning. By seven letters, he's already there. For those who have exams to invigilate for eight o'clock. The first paper is usually eight o'clock. And I had eight o'clock paper. So by seven, I was there. So I can collect, then collect answer scripts, and then go and administer the exam. It was my paper. I waited. Seven o'clock. When I got there, it wasn't, I said, no, he will soon come. He will soon come. 7.30, he was not there. Quarter to eight, he was not there. I ran upstairs. The students were there. Were sitting. I said, please, uh, just wait. Uh, I'm waiting for the exam officer. I believe bef uh, before eight. I just wanted to tell you, I'll go down. I'll soon be back. Eight o'clock, the man was not there. 8.30, he was not there. Quarter to nine, he was not, I was jittery. And you know, usually, the students would have become uh, uncomfortable, there's usually you have people from academic office who are also going around monitoring exam. What is this kind of thing? I think it was around, maybe around 10 minutes to 9. The man strolled. By the time I was, I was worrying like this, and I, I now ran down. For, I don't know how many times I've, I went up and down. And he had come. You know, something was telling me, you're a Christian, no? Oh. 
Be calm. Be calm. So I thought, Kai, I have tried. The thing was, he was paining me on the inside. But since I cannot, I cannot, I can't do like I wanted. <laughs> I was just calm. So I said, good morning, sir. Uh, my, my paper. And I was really congratulating myself that I've tried. I tried. I was surprised that I was that calm. And I brought it out. And I collected it. So as I was leaving, I said, but you were late. Too. That was all I said. You know, in my heart, I was saying, he would just say, Kai, I'm sorry. Something happened. I hope there won't be any a trouble. I can come up and explain to the students and uh, uh, those monitoring exams from this end. Ah! Once I said, but you were late, too. Oh my God, come and see how the man rules. You know, the flesh is very. The man rules. He said, What do you mean? How can you learn? Well, yeah, yeah. I said, What? So I said, No, sir. You are late. I didn't expect you to be talking to, like that. He said, What do you mean? Why didn't you collect it yesterday? What did. I said, But that's not the practice. I was still. The man was screaming on top of his voice. So I was saying, no, you are wrong. So I had to raise my voice also. I said, now wait. Isn't that they fear you? Now God, I refuse and they look fearful. So wait. Why intimidate me? You know, the thing is a thin line between the flesh and the spirit. Me, I also entered. He was screaming. I was screaming. Ah, I'm not proud of what I did as an unbeliever. But in those days, but they're not born you two times, so you know as they talk, I'm saying, "What do they carry last?" To no fear, and the fear face. Thirteen, you the short bottle. Waiting, waiting, happen. Go scatter the thing. I said, you look me, what chance me? What chance me? Is that they fear you? I'll write your name for your back. You know, in those days, they taught us how to, you go crack bottle with, yeah, once you wear like something like jeans or velvet. Once you have gas, you go collect and crack and say, wait, I see what you do. So they look on Kujatona and say they're raising daughters. He say the man talk, then they go in house. Now that kind of place we go like go now. Say the man they shop but you go marry children. We can't try now. So I rose. They don't try that kind of thing with me. Oh. Say, I never get time for you. Let me go and invigilate my exam and come back. Then we'll finish this matter. As I was climbing the stairs going up, the Holy Spirit said to me, So that's how you disgrace me. Ah! I was deflated. But I wanted to give the Holy Spirit a lecture. I said, No, sir. He was wrong. He came late and he was not apologetic about it. He said, So what? So he raised his voice. You raised your voice. He said, if somebody was passing outside, hearing those two voices, your voice and his voice, inside the office, what would they conclude? They said, that brother is fighting with that man. Is that the kind of image of me you're showing? Ah! All the gra gra. Just finished inside me. I say, Oh God, oh God, even when people are wrong, you will not allow me even to shake small. He said, No, you can't shake. A dead man has nothing to protect. Eh? 
Have you ever seen a dead man trying to protect? He said, there's too much noise around here. Then he will stand up. When he finishes, he said, keep quiet now. Then you go and die again. Say, you have nothing. You have nothing to protect. Ah. You know, the Lord was dealing with foundation. Some of us, that's why it's difficult. I can't change you. There's nothing else I can become. Except in the hands of God. I can't run around with them. And the Lord said, but what did I say? Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. Even though he's not an elder, he's a little bit older than you. If he's shouting, must you shout back? That's how I finish the exam. You know, it's not that he said it, so I can go and repent quietly. That's how I finished the exam. I went and kept the scripts. And I went down to look for him in his office to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When I came in, I said, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. You raised your voice. I raised my voice. I'm sorry. Then the man started laughing. He said, I know I was wrong. I was just doing bold face. That's him. Now, but honestly, listen. Listen, it's also the flesh. I knew he was trying to excuse me away from my misbehavior. And I said, no, don't make it lighter for me. I didn't do well. I'm a Christian. I'm not supposed to behave like that. But why am I telling you that? I felt that uh -uh, there are people who behave worse than that. In fact, some brethren will come and give testimony and say, look, you don't let you don't let the devil just ride on you. That's how one man in my office was trying to do like this. I gave it to him and we will be clapping. But me, they didn't allow me to give it to him. They will give it to me. Say, keep quiet. Ah, you don't know. You don't know. One day they set me up. Because I caught a girl cheating in an exam. Very clearly. And all the evidences were there. All the evidences. One lecturer was befriending her. So they went behind. all. They did all kinds of things. And made nonsense of the evidences. And tried to turn the case against me. Ah! This, I was angry. I said, I'm, in fact, if they cover this case, I'm going to court. Rogule said, to defend who? <laughs> when I tell you that that man damaged my life, Kai. He said, but we have no self to defend. Who are you going to court to defend? Brother, is 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 you see the when God means to go far with you, Uncle, your own foundation, he digs it deep. So last night God began to deal with the food you must eat if you want to go far. You know, as the devil has his images. That is portraying everywhere. Heaven has the image that is also showing us that we must become. Are you with me? Eh? There's the image of Christ. His life that we must carry. That we must struggle to become. The stones that will pursue this positive image God is showing us of his life and be used to crush this image that the world system is showing us. Those stones, they are not prepared casually. They are not prepared carelessly. So from last night, it became clear to us that Anyone who is electing to be one of such stones, you will need to check what you eat. You will need to check what you eat. You need to deal with your appetite. You need to be careful where you feed from. Some of you are in assemblies where they teach you what will not be convenient for righteousness. What will not help you in this journey that God is putting you in, you may need to prayerfully consider 
where to be feeding from. The kind of friends you're keeping, if there are people, they may be Christians, so to say. But you see the way they are going. They are saying it doesn't matter. Those things they are saying do not matter may become matters arising for you tomorrow because God is going somewhere. You may need to check from whose hand you collect food. And let me tell you, the food may look very nourishing. It may look very appetizing. But you need to be very careful. Some years ago, one man came to invite me for a revival in his church. And I checked, I prayed, I felt I should go. One weekend, I came back from a trip. And my wife said, that man came. I said, what did you come to do? I've already talked with him. He said, the man said, I should bring your diary, since you are not around. That he's not sure the meeting is in your diary. Uh -uh. Why? Why? That the man said, he wants to see it. He's not sure you booked him. So when eventually he saw me, after about two visits, I said, what's the trouble? He said, you know, you just said you are going to come for our meeting. It doesn't happen like that. I'm not sure you will come because you have not given us the conditions. I said, but we're not in the civil service now. Do you mean, what condition of service are we given? By the way, what do you mean by condition? He said, like the hotel we should book you into. Is it three star or you insist on five star? This is how I was looking at him. He said, and uh, you didn't give us your menu. And you have not given us an idea of the honorarium. You know, that's the trouble. I didn't discuss my honorarium with you. I think we should... Uh, I know the way they arrogantly do it. They won't even talk with it. They say, see my peer, my peer, my peer. Useless arrogance. <laughs> I didn't know how to handle him. Again, he was older. <laughs> I have learned my lesson. Rebuke not an elder. All I could say to him, I said, sir, we did not so learn Christ. Go. We will come. But it was after the revival I knew why he was behaving like that. Because he asked me, he said, do you know the first message you preach in this church? I was trying to recall where God started with us on Friday. He said, no, that's not the first message you preach. He began to tell me, he said, even your attitude, even when you came. He said, that's the first message you preach. Because the man we invited to take the revival before you last year. Ah. He insisted we will lodge him in either Nikon Noga Hotel or Sheraton. He gave us a bill for the petrol that brought him. Then the petrol that we take him back before we started negotiating the honorarium. I opened my mouth. Excuse me, foundation. Can I do such a thing? Where, the, where would I have said I learnt it? So others may be misbehaving. If you do choose to be a stone that will deal with the image of entertainment and the and music we are seeing, because I'm careful now to call some of what they are doing ministry. It looks like we have music practitioners and we have some music ministers. You choose the one you want to be in. Although everybody will want to come and say, yes, I'm a music minister, I'm a music minister. He's remaining small now. They will soon start answering it as a name. Music minister pick. That's why you don't respect me. Eh? I don't understand, bro. Jato, you just come and say, bro, pick. Bro, pick. This man does not respect me. Next time, it is music minister <laughs> and I'm looking at them and say, for what? I hope you know they are answering, answering it now. I heard one, he said, deliverance minister. Yes, sir. You see, the, the image that the world is, set, is showing us, the salesmanship of the world, 
If God does not help your heart, excuse me, you will follow that. So the first thing God began to deal with is check what you eat and where you are eating from. This morning, I want to press ahead a little bit. I hope that we can do that. I want to check the choices you make. Apart from the food, the choices, what you do with sin, matters. If you're going to be very light with sin, I don't see you walking properly on this road that we're talking about. And I've been checking. I want to use the life of a man whose very name actually is music ministry. In quote. The intention of God for his life is that everything about him will be bringing praise to the Lord. You know, yesterday we were learning, and I don't want you to forget it. Worship is the natural response of a normal person to his creator. I am emphasizing that because other created beings, they don't have trouble, they don't struggle with their creator. They just know they exist for him. They, they comply very well. That's why when Jonah will be disobeying, the fish has no trouble worshipping its maker. He said, there's this rascal that is running away. Uh, go and swallow him for me. But you know you can't digest him. I still want to use him. I just want to teach him a lesson. The fish knew that although it's my nature that when I swallow something I eat it. But he just knew that this time around Oga says I should be a bank for him. And if that's what he has chosen what's my own? The fish could have been asking if I keep him for three days it means, and I can't eat him. And I also can't eat any other thing. Who hunger kill me? Are you asking me to do dry fasting? You know, I see that even animals can fast. When the situation becomes very critical. But that's not the problem of the fish. You see, oh, God just said, I should keep this man for him. Until he sends his return. When he starts crying from there. Or God will tell me what to do. Ha -ha! Remember that they were on the way. To Tashish. Very different route. The Americans will say route. They were far. But in worship. To the maker. The fish say yes sir. And just open them. I say. Go near now. They are, they are soon going to drop him. And as soon as they dropped him, he just did like this. Collected him. So a guy, he's here now. He says, start driving towards Nineveh. That's where we are going to deal with the matter. As he was reaching, he said, we are, we are near. And it's been three days. He said, yes, I just wanted him. You can hear his crying now. Go close to the shore. And vomiting. Once he comes out, go back. I have food for you to eat. You can start eating normal. He says, yes, sir. That's the normal response. That's worship. Actually, if we understand what we are teaching, what we are seeing from the word of God, it's not just what we are teaching. Your entire life is supposed to be a life of worship. Everything you do should be an act of worship. Even when you're receiving a wife, you are receiving as an act of worship. You're saying, ah, thank you. You are sending somebody to help me. I am receiving this help with thanksgiving. So actually, if your wife misbehaved, I didn't think it was 
proper to start quarreling with her. The right thing to have done is to go back to where you received her. Say, sir, uh, is this the way uh, this help? Uh, this, this, this what happened? How do I handle that now? Because uh, I can't, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just living a life of obedience. He said, don't mind her. She didn't listen to me very well in the morning. I was actually trying to show her that the devil was laying some ambush, but she was too much in a hurry. And actually it was because of you that she didn't listen well because she was hurrying out to make breakfast for you. That was all that was in her mind. So before I could finish explaining that there's an ambush, there's an ambush, she had rushed up. That's why she entered into this. Ignore that. Just be praying for her to quickly realize it. And say, oh, thank you, sir. So you are coming, say, my dear, ah, I, don't, I don't think you have eaten this morning. And she's wondering, but I, I didn't do well. for. It. So when she says, no, no, forget that. Um, I've been praying about it. I think God will just, just, just sort it out. Let's continue. And would have just continued. Would have just continued. Everything we do should be geared towards responding properly to the one who created us. And I'm seeing that that's what God intended even from the beginning. Who do I want to use to illustrate this so that we can move a little bit? Oh God, help me. I'm a bit uh, ambitious this morning. I hope I can, I can deal with it. I am looking at Judah. Judah. So, follow me to Genesis 29. Follow me to Genesis 29. Um, if you're there, you will, you will go to verse uh, 31. When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb. But Rachel was barren. So Leah conceived and bore a son. And she called his name Reuben. You know what Reuben means? See a son. Eh? See a son. She didn't see God. She saw a son. She didn't see the one who gave her opportunity. To reproduce like God intended for her to do. She says, see a son. And why was she so concerned about seeing a son? She said, because the Lord has surely looked on my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. That was the essence for her. <laughs> so it was personal. He had nothing to do with the purpose of God being realized and a, with a thankful disposition. So she took in again. Heaven said, let's, let's leave this. Maybe she will learn. She conceived again. And you know what she started saying? It's because the Lord has heard that I am unloved. You said after the first one that now your husband will love you. Why didn't, she, why didn't he love you? I still didn't occur to you. So, she gave him Simeon. Simeon, which literally means head. So, she conceived again a third time. She said, now, this time my husband will become attached to me. Because I have born him three sons. So, what did she, what did she call him? Levi. It means attached. Attached. Then, in verse 35. She conceived again and bore a son and said, Now something is dawning upon her. Let me stop misbehaving. There's a purpose for my creation. I am not reacting naturally. My default setting, I have been tampering with it. Whether it's marriage or giving birth to children is an act of worship to my maker. I have not been remembering him. I have not been responding well. 
So when this one was born, she said, enough of misbehavior. She said, now, 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 this time. My own Bible version, New King James, say, now, this time. Now, I will praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name, what? Judah. And you will see after that, the Bible says she stopped bearing. I don't want to go into that. And what led to the resumption of bearing. <laughs> because from then on, it was competition that made her return. But it's alright. Including dashing her servant girl in competition with the sister. That's all right. So that's how this man was born. And his very name, Judah, you can see the meaning, what it meant. So his birth was indicative of his life and what he was supposed to be. And Judah began to grow. He began to grow. You saw that he began to make choices. If he was going to fulfill God's purpose, as he was growing, he began to make choices. One day, his other brothers, Simeon and Levi, decided to be cunning and crafty and told the people, the boy and his father and his people, the boy that raped dinner, he said, don't worry. Just be circumcised. We'll give her to you. And while they were sore, they carried the sword. Two of them. Simeon and Levi. And finished. Finished the entire, entire city. Two of them. It was so terrible. But I was checking it. Judah was absent. Choices you make. That lady was as much his sister as she was to Simeon and Levi. But when they decided that act of violence and killing innocent people, Judah chose to be absent. He didn't join them. Excuse me. If you will be a stone that will be used to deal with the image we are talking about, when others choose to use their body to slaughter men who should have become something in the hands of God, you will choose to be absent. A brother this morning was illustrating and said, if you are a correct sister, if any brother comes to start touching you anyhow, you should warn him very strongly and say, stop that. And he says, sister, my hand. I say, no, I'm not that type. If you do it next time, you will not like my reaction. Stop it. Even if the brother is engaged to you. There was one sister that came for counseling. She said, I don't know what entered into my head. I don't know. She was engaged to this brother. She said, I don't know what entered into my head. She was the one who came to confess. And I wanted him to sleep with me. So I grabbed him. He kept begging and begging. When I grabbed him and he couldn't go, he said the brother knew that he needed to run for his life. So when I was holding him and trying to push him down, he offered me a slap offering. I released him. He ran. He said that reset he did the reset. The thing reset my. <laughs> so, sir, I'm thanking God for that slap. The brother didn't like the fact that he had to do that. But in desperation, there was no other way he could escape. When you see uh, brothers who say, after all, we are going to get married. 
When you see brothers who use the talent heaven has given them to hold the body of Christ to ransom, you choose to be absent from that kind of thing. When there's a meeting in the band among instrumentalists, they say, well, we can't be playing for nothing. The skill is not easy to acquire. We are going to meet the leadership of the church. They have to be giving us an allowance. They have to pay us. Brother, you can choose to be absent from such a meeting. He said, we are going to do that. We are going to do that. I said, but I will not follow you. You know you can do that. I don't, I don't, I don't hide it. When I came into the ministry, because God was sending me to go and labor, that's the only reason. In the Anglican communion. I said it openly. Anytime I see anybody, some clergymen gather, and they are planning to, to do something. They say, we'll go and confront the bishop. This kind of thing. This, this kind of thing. I said, I will not follow you. I didn't hide it. I won't follow you. Once I come into, I'm in a place and you start discussing, gossiping about leadership and all of that, I, I give way. If I can't stop you, I will not partake. That's not the reason God sent me there. Light is not needed in light. Where is light needed? In darkness. Something brought me. You can't, you can't, you can't shift my attention. Excuse me. When they decided to slaughter innocent people, what did Judah do? Talk to me. He was absent because his name, his life was meant to bring praise to God. Even his name. If you accept that your natural default setting is to honor God, is to worship God in obedience, that ought to be your life. Once you sense compromise, go away from there. Judah decided to be away from such things. When they slaughter, and I hope you know, I hope you know, oh, I wish I had time to check. You may think it was small. No, it was not small. It was in heaven record this kind of thing. And the rest of the things, I will, I'm going to be talking about. You know, it was, it was interesting for me to note. We will still pursue uh, a few of the choices he made. But it was interesting for me to note when his father, let me take a leap, when his father was going to pass on the covenant he had received. The image of a covenant carrier, the image of the coming Messiah that heaven showed Abraham. Before Abraham died, he passed on that image to Isaac. He said, he told me, by you, all families of the earth, your entire earth will be blessed. It was a very great image he was shown. And the man that was shown this, when God was showing him, he didn't have one son. But God said, that's where we are going. He saw the image. And he walked conscientiously. When he was dying, he had not seen it. He passed it on to Isaac. Isaac, when he was dying, even though he almost made a mistake, but there was a consciousness, I can't die with this thing. Before I die, I better pass it on. So he said, and to him, is the first son who should just inherit it. Eh? I don't know why he thought like that. But God rescued him. And he passed it on to Jacob. And you may be wondering, uh, uh, why? Let's leave that. Let's leave that. And you saw that once he pronounced it, even when he saw came crying, he said, I have blessed him and he's blessed. I can't retrieve it. I can't retrieve it. So Jacob himself was going to go. <laughs> you know that he, if we have time to check him, he actually repented and came back to the default setting of his life to be able to carry that covenant. At Peniel, you remember that day he battled with the Lord uh, and something happened. His name changed. 
and there was no more struggle. He could look at Esau and bow before him. He said, there's nothing we are struggling anymore. There's nothing. What am I struggling for? What God will do, he will do. So he wanted to pass it on. And I saw how he came. For Reuben, I'm talking about the choices you made. He already disqualified himself. When Baba started, he said, Reuben, you're my firstborn. The beginning of my strength. Ah, I can imagine Reuben say, Baba, say it again. Say it again because small time, all these work were uh, Zebulon them and, uh, and, and uh, uh, Isaka. They, they'll just be behaving anyhow. He said, the excellency of strength is, oh God, oh God, oh God. God, did you hear that? Do you hear what Baba is saying? Until Baba landed and said, but you will not excel. Eh? You mean this covenant is passing over me? Say, ah, ah. It's the choices you made and you didn't repent of it. You went up to my bed. You defiled your father's bed. You thought I didn't know. You know, unfortunately, it was the day Baba was dying that this was coming on. Once he finished, he said, <laughs> Simeon and Levi are brothers. I wanted to ask, uh, God and Zebulon, not brothers. But there was something he was dealing with. I am praying that in this thing we are talking about, in becoming what God wants for you to be, don't wait. I, I hope you will not postpone in this meeting, in making your consecration. His name meant Judah, meant praise. When he finished with Reuben and went to Simeon and Levi, Reuben kept quiet. I don't know what he was waiting for. I wish he cried out immediately and said, Baba, don't go to Simeon and Levi. Settle my case. He kept quiet. Unfortunately, in Genesis 49, as soon as Baba finished, he gathered his legs on top of the bed, straightened himself and died. Reuben didn't have another opportunity. But since Reuben is not my case, this morning. Let me quickly rush. He says Simeon and Levi. So already Reuben was disqualified. Simeon and Levi. He said they are brothers. In their anger. He said their anger is great. Some of you, you say, you don't know what this person did to me. That's why uh, like this. Some of you, when you get angry, nobody can be near you. You even boast about it. You say, we're angry people in my family. Oh, be careful. When I get angry here, uncle repent. I have come to discover that ang man's anger never can walk righteous God's righteousness. Never. And Baba said, these people, instruments of cruelty, violence, is in their hands. Uh -uh. This is a man, they raped his daughter. When he heard it, he kept his school. He said, let's reason properly how to handle this matter. Let's receive from God how to go. No, no, not with Simeon and Levi. They took the issues in their hands. The choices they made disqualified them. In that Genesis 49, their father said, my soul, don't come near the sin. I can't live. Ah, no, 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 no. He said, I will scatter them in Israel. I don't have time, but can I please say something to you that has been troubling me? For some days now, I've been, I've been crying. I say, Lord, don't let me make this kind of mistake. It's too costly. It's too costly. Do you know I discovered that this thing that happened in, and what their father said in Genesis 49, I went to check Deuteronomy 33 when Moses was dying. Generations after. Many generations after. When Moses was dying, Moses began to bless Israel. When I finished reading it, I said, no, pick, you made a mistake. Go back again. Maybe you may need to check for me, sir. Those of you that know Bible more than me. Elder, go and check. Do you know that I, I read it, went back, read it again. Simeon was omitted. 
When Moses was blessing them, as they were about entering, they had reached the border of Canaan. And he was going. Joshua was going to carry them and enter. I discovered that nothing was said about Simeon. You see, that scattering that their father was talking about, he was not small. You may say, but he spoke about Levi. The only thing that rescued Levi, that's why I'm talking about choices you make. And I hope you will repent. The only thing that saved Levi was that he made his own personal consecration, but it was a costly consecration. It was costly. The price. He had to slaughter father, mother, brothers, sisters, friends. It was a very costly consecration. He had to violently push back into the fold. When Moses said, who is on the Lord's side? That's the only thing that rescued Levi. But even then, he missed out on the covenant. He couldn't carry the covenant. Reuben has already missed out. Simeon has missed out. It looks as if to me, Simeon was the most cruel. Very, very terrible man. And you may say, why, why, why are you talking like that, Brother Peak? You discover that when Joseph was to keep one of them in Egypt, who did he tie? Talk to me now. Manasseh, who did he tie? It was Simeon. It was Simeon. <laughs> I'm imagining that he was the one that spearheaded, maybe he was the one even that dropped him inside the pit when they decided, because you know they think violence is not a small thing for him. And Joseph said, this one, I remember what he had suffered for in hand, Say, tie him, tie him in the first place. He was the one. Reuben, very weak, he couldn't do anything, said, leave him. But Simeon, Simeon. So when others went back to their father, Simeon was in prison. Say, this one, very wicked man. He missed out. He missed out. Levi, although he came back, but he was still scattered in Israel. No inheritance. Yes, thank God, God became his inheritance. But it was any tribe they gave inheritance, they were cut small for them. But I didn't hear Simeon. It looks like Simeon was completely assimilated by Judah. The man who was carrying the covenant. You know, I'm tracing this thing. Look, I'm just praying that God will give you understanding. You know? Because the people you are envying, if you don't follow correctly, don't wait. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. You will watch as those who carry correct life will come eventually. Dismantle the image you are pursuing and grow and become something. Maybe then you will be begging bread. May that not be your portion. But this man made choices. He made choices because of who he was meant to become. You discover that actually it was when they threw Joseph into the pit to die. To die there. This man began to Judah, something was in his heart. He was not strong enough to stop them. He's actually the fourth born. Not first, not second, not third. And these other people, the first was too weak to even say, why will you even try that kind of thing? And Simeon, too violent for anybody to control. And his younger brother is always with him. His hand is with him in every terrible thing. Levi. They, will, they can easily... So Judah began to say, excuse me, but what will we gain by killing our own brother and concealing his blood? Is there any gain? That's the first time I've seen somebody reasoning well among all of them. He wasn't strong enough, but something, there's a foundation that has been laid in his life that he didn't quite like this thing that is happening. Look at the choices he began to make. He says it's not correct. It will not benefit us anything. Eh? 
Why will we do that and cover his, his, his blood? I think that's in 37, isn't it? He said, no, let's not do that. And when they eventually went back to their father, I need to rush now. They eventually went back to their father and told a lie. They saw their father crying every day. My son is dead. My son is dead. They knew the truth. But they couldn't talk. I can imagine that Judah at one point will say, me, I will tell Baba the truth. Oh. They say, look, you know me. You know me. Even though I'm wearing glasses, you're wearing glasses. You know me. Try it. Just try it. So at a point, he couldn't hold it. All those Bible references, go and read. I don't have time now. Can I paraphrase it? You know what he did? He packed and left. He couldn't stand every day. The Baba is crying. He knew the truth. The rest will not allow him to say the truth. The thing was aching him. So he just packed. Say it's even better. Let me go and join my friend, a Canaanite. Instead of living here every day in deceit, we will come and be consoling Baba, but we know what happened. He's our brother. So I can't stand it. That's how he left. You will discover that later, when they went to to buy food in Egypt and they came back. The father said, eh, go and buy us more food. They said, the man warned us if we don't come with our youngest brother, we will not go. He said, but how can I allow Benjamin go with you? Reuben came as firstborn. He said, release the boy into my hands. I will, I will, I will take care of him. Jacob said, like you took care of Joseph. How can I trust you? A firstborn with dignity who does not know his place. He did not even think twice about that. He didn't give him a chance. When he said again, but won't you people go and buy us food? He said, but we told you, he said, it will not come. Reuben said, but I, I said, Man, I don't want to hear you. Then Judah came out and said, Baba, Release the boy into my hands. If I don't bring him back, let me bear the shame before my father the rest of my life. I can't allow the same stick to blind me two times. We need to be sustained. And if this boy is the one that we, the man must see to give us food, let it be so. And trust him into my hands. I promise I will bring him back. If I don't, <laughs> I will bear the shame before you the rest of my life. Don't worry. I was shocked that when Baba couldn't trust Reuben, of course, Simeon and Levi don't go near. He said, all they know is sword. But let them go and fight Egypt now. They will finish them. By this time, Simeon was already in custody. Levi had become weak. He might he not even put mouth at all. Like we say in pidgin English. You know, shook him out for that matter. But, uh, trees won't be trees. No boast about the Say them strong. Their stem strong. Now, Kukayan could go on the talk. I bet. My hear what? Until Judah spoke. When they got there, and you know that plot to test. Because <laughs> when they came back, Joseph asked them a question. I don't think they understood. He carried double meaning. When they got there, he said, is the old man still alive? They said, yes, our father. Uh, our father, your servant is still alive. Joseph shook his head. He said, they don't understand what I'm talking about. There's an old nature inside you. Terrible. The one that could sell me and cover it. 
Is he still alive? They didn't understand. So he decided to test whether that nature, they are still carrying it. He decided to try that with Benjamin. That's why he said, put my cup inside. And you know the story. So when they came, <laughs> and Joseph said, ah, so you stole my cup. First and foremost, they, they didn't know how he entered, so they could have concluded, Reuben, I mean, Benjamin, stole a cup. What are you looking for with cup? Why will you steal cup? But that's not the issue for Judah. When they came, Joseph said, there's no problem. The rest of you can go. The boy who stole my cup will be my slave. <laughs> Judah said, I don't misbehave, Richo. You don't do me. I've kept quiet all these years. And I'm waiting now. Reuben did not talk. Even though they brought out Simeon to eat with us. And they are releasing him. He didn't talk. Look at Levi. Oh, ho, he no talk. I can no longer look at them. He turned and faced Joseph. He said, excuse me, sir. There's a confession I must make. I have carried this thing for long. I don't know the sin you have been carrying for long. It will stop you from being the stone we are talking about. If your life will mean worship, if your life will mean praise, if your action will bring honor to God as a natural response to your creator, you will have to open up. The man said, I have something to say. Please, I know that you are like Pharaoh. Just permit me to talk. You may not understand everything I'm saying, but I need to confess to somebody. I know why this thing is happening to us. So look at us like this. You see us count. We are 11. Not be so we be. Our papa bomb passed like that. We used to be 12. Something happened. We went back and told a story. And my father concluded. He said, an animal has slaughtered it. That's the first time Joseph was knowing what actually they told their father. He said, since that time, you know I was there. I couldn't do anything about it. But I've grown now. I can't continue like that. I have made a choice to part with deceit and sin. Since that time, my father has been in pain. When this boy was to come, I became shorty for him. Now you're saying the boy should stay back. I can't bear to see the pain that will fall upon my father again. The one he's bearing before is too much for me. You want to multiply it? No, 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 no. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Let the boy go. I offer to be your slave. May God help you understand what we are talking about. That's a man whose life must bring honor and praise. To, I don't know the choices you're making. I don't know what you're hiding. In fact, his confession, his selfless offer was too much. Joseph said, the Bible said Joseph could not bear it again. He said, what am I looking about, talking about? Even the kind of heart I want to, I'm carrying. Look at it in Judah. What am I hiding again? He's confessing to me. He doesn't know that I know the story. That I'm the very person he's talking about. But he's just telling me this. I've confessed what it is now. Just for you to understand why you cannot keep this boy. Let him go. In exchange, the man had sons who he should be going back to. He said, in exchange, I will be your slave. I may die, but that's all right. Let Benjamin go. Joseph also being a godly man. You see, God is not interested in disgracing his children. Say, so what else? What will I be waiting for? But I can't say this thing when Egyptians are watching. Say, so let everybody go away. Let them go away. You know, sometimes the way you deal with the secrets of the kingdom is not correct. 
The way you handle issues of your brethren is not correct. Correct. So let everybody go away. And the Bible says nobody was there when he made known himself to his brethren. Choices that Judah made. As I start tying up because of our time, you will need to check how to handle sin and sinful situations in your life and all around you. Look at just look at where it landed and ended Simeon. Could it be that Moses would have forgotten that there were 12 tribes? Violence. Violence. Reuben that could have collected the covenant clearly disqualified. The next one, Simeon. Violence. Clearly disqualified. Levi. Clearly disqualified, except, like I told you, that matter. Joseph, I mean, uh, Judah. He landed on Judah. He said, the scepter will not depart from Judah till he comes. Do you know that when they were, when their father was going to Egypt, when they were coming close, who did Jacob send to go ahead and tell Jacob, uh, Joseph that they have arrived? Who? It was Judah. Reuben was there. He didn't send him. Levi was there. He didn't send him. Simeon was there. He didn't send him. It was still this same Judah that went. Do you want your life to bring praise to the Lord? You must begin to check the decisions you make. So when Baba was dying, he said, no. We can't negotiate this thing now. The scepter it has to be with Judah until Shiloh comes. Let me ask you, what will make heaven bypass you? Is sin. Compromise. What will make heaven jump your head? Is sin. What is going to bring you into the covenant? What is going to make you become a carrier of what you were born to be? Is the choices you will make now. Apart from food that you eat, dealing with your appetite, we are talking about dealing with compromises in your life. Sin in your life. Maybe there's a sin you have covered for so long. Anytime you want to go near it, the devil tells you, don't go there. Don't confess it. Don't worry, it will never happen again. I discover that it will always happen. If you want to disarm sin in your life, expose it. Confess it. Is there a, bes a besetting sin in your life? Every time you cry and the devil tells you, don't tell anybody, it will not happen again. But you see, it keeps happening. It will be repeated. Even as you're here now, we cannot joke over it. Maybe you will become like Judah today. So I want my name to mean praise. I don't care. This man I'm talking to may not even understand. He does not know who. I, he may be an Egyptian because he thought he was an Egyptian. He was speaking to them through an interpreter. He said, but I need to open my life. If I must go forward, my life has to be open. We have been terrible people. We were 12. That's how we finished one. I can't allow another to be finished. Maybe you have been in a relationship. That it was not clean. It's been scattering your life. When you could have been singing and the glory of God will be shining around. You have become a caricature. A shadow of the man you were created to be. You can't collect this matter we are talking about. With these hidden things in your life. You can't become this stone that can deal with this image. Your own standing will be very shaky. But stones that will handle this imposing image of entertainment. There must be stones that have no hidden agenda and hidden sin. There must be stones 
that watch what they eat and check how they react to compromises, to sin. Are you willing today to separate yourself from the company of violent men? Are you willing to separate yourself from the company of deceivers who will see their father crying every time, every time, every time, but they are responsible, but they cannot tell him. Reuben could hide it. Judah couldn't. He withdrew. When he had the opportunity, he said, I cannot have grown. No. I can't continue like this. Every time God has been speaking like this, I can't continue to run away. They may hate me for it. That's all right. But I will confess. I will tell you. That's all well. He confessed. And I just saw the mercy of God. Rather than being thrown away, he brought a higher revelation unto him. That's the first time they were knowing that Joseph was alive. It was what Judah did that opened that revelation. There is yet a revelation of the provision of God, his provisions for your life and ministry ahead that can't come out until you confess. Until you deal with these issues that have been hindering you. Anytime you want to make progress, it draws you back. This morning, I see God coming to us to settle us. I see God coming to say, who will be like Judah? That will not care this morning. Say, so I don't care. I don't care what anybody thinks about me. I want to move away from them. When they wear short things, that when they stand outside, is tempting men. I also follow them to wear. When they dress somehow, I follow to dress. Is there any brother here who is saying, when the, the, the people who are popular just use it to intimidate sisters and be touching them anyhow because they are popular. I used to join them. But this morning, I have heard the word of God. I will respond. I must grow in Christ too. I can't continue like this. I will walk the path of faith. As I this morning deliberately yield my life to him. We are going to be singing that first hymn. That first verse of that hymn. And I want you. I don't have time. Our time is gone now. To quickly just rush out here. If you are still waiting and say. I don't, I don't want anybody to know. You can sit down. You can sit down. You will keep going around circles. Nothing will move. But the day Judah decided. I don't care who hears it may even be an Egyptian that I'm talking to. But hear what has happened. My life cannot continue like this. He brought a fresh revelation of the provisions of God ahead. That man, for those things that he did, he collected the covenant. The scepter did not depart from Judah. Today, we still call Jesus the lion of the tribe of Judah. Stand up, let's pray. Let's pray now. Let's pray now. Let's pray now. Will these brothers just come and be singing that verse 1? I must grow in Christ, my Lord. Just be singing it as we join. And let me ask you to quickly run out here. I don't think, don't wait. You say, let me see whether anybody will come out. You can do the Judah. He didn't wait to, wait to know whether Reuben will come out. Reuben may never come out. But he decided, no. Me, I won't even wait. God bless you. God bless. They are not even waiting for us to start singing. Please, run out here now. Because Judah, Judah, he didn't wait. He may be an Egyptian. Ah! He said, no, 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 no. No, no, no. I can't keep postponing God's dealings upon my life. And any center, any of our centers, please, just as an indication, take a step of faith and come outside. As we begin to sing now, man of God, Please come, 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 Pastor. Please come because we must cry over this life. I must grow in Christ. My just go ahead, go ahead and sing it. Go ahead and sing it. I'm a hair of salvation. Salvation, I will walk the path of faith as I yield my life.
life to I must grow in Christ. I must grow in my consecration. I cannot allow this kind of thing to keep happening. Like Judah, I want to do something about it. I must grow. I must grow. Yes. Yeah. 